Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I want to review a movie from 1977 called The Deep. Now, uh, I remember in 76, Jaws came out. I never saw Jaws until years later. I wanted to go see it. Uh, and Peter Bensley wrote the novel. And now, like a year later, they had the movie The Deep, uh, written by Peter Bensley. And said from the I wrote Jaws. And we went to the drive-in to watch it. Uh, I thought it would be a horror film because, but it says anything worth the terror of the deep. But they kind of build it as a horror film, but it's a sunken treasure film with made a little bit of horror in it. Uh, I've never seen it with mom, dad, my, me, my sister. My sister's so little, though. And when things got intense in the deep, my mom told my sister to go to, to, told her to, go to sleep. Um. Now, I had show John this. This was on Tubi TV. And he said his parents took him to see it as a drive in too when it came out. I remember the double bill was uh, Fun with Dick and Jane. That's, I think, the first George Seagull movie I've ever seen. I'm a big fan of his. I never saw the remake with uh, Jim Carrey. Anyways, um, I remember seeing it as a kid. I didn't know it was going to be, I thought it was going to be a monster, but it turned out to be something different. I don't know if I fully appreciated it. I've been wanting to see it ever since. And I had a hell of a time finding it. Big time finding it. I couldn't find it like video rentals. Well, I mean, I pretty much looked for it in Germany. And then afterwards, thinking about it, I like to see an action adventure film. You know, and uh, I think I think I did see it in uh, in Walmart. Uh, for five, and I said, nah, I, I said, nah, I don't feel like getting it. But I mean, I've been wanting to see it for I don't know how long. And I, you forget about it and stuff. And I was looking on Tubi TV. Tubi TV is awesome. They have so many great, great selection of movies on there. You just got put with commercials, right? It was on Tubi TV. I watched it. Um, in like two hours and four minutes. And I think I, I, I appreciate it a lot more. I remember, like, as a kid, I remember the more eel seal, more eel scene being scary. And also, there's a scene where, I mean, this was back when PG rated movies were, were like, you can get away with showing more stuff. This is way before PG 13. You can actually have, like, female nudity and uh, bloodshed and stuff like that. Like, I mean, Grizzly showed, like, guys getting their arms ripped off. Um, I mean, you can't really show that much of PG Ray movies now, but back then you could. I remember towards the beginning, Jackson Bassett was in there, and she was wearing these see-through shirts. Well, she was wearing t-shirts, but you could see her breasts pretty clear, very clearly. I think like halfway through the movie, she started wearing other stuff. She couldn't do that. I think you know, I think that's all they could get away with in the movie. I guess keep from being R. I guess. Um, there's a bloodshed, and there was a scene that I always. Freaked me out with these voodoo. They were talking about voodoo, and they had a cat that was killed, and they had a voodoo scene. A guy snug in her room. They they were in this weird garb, and they had like a chicken foot. They dipped it in blood. And they were uh, raking on her stomach. I guess painting or something like that. I think that's when my mom told my sister to uh, go to bed. And I I didn't want to make. I didn't want to. I it freaked me out. I didn't want to cut my eyes because then it was oh I can't watch, can't watch, can't watch. You know what I mean? Uh, that did freak me out as a kid, and it's still kind of freaky now. And then it seemed with Amore Eel. I thought it was at the very beginning, but some she got uh, something was pulling her for that was scary for me back then. You know, uh, it's a really great movie. And Louis Goss Jr. was in there, but I didn't know who he was at the time. I really didn't know Louis Goss Jr. till like Enemy Mine and uh, Officer and Gentleman. She was, I mean, he was in this movie. Way before that, um, as a bad guy. And then there was stuff I didn't understand, like there was a sunken treasure and they found this little bottle. And it was a it was uh I mean it was a they found a sunken ship, right? They're investigating it and they found this little bottle and it turned out to be opium. And they said there was like ninety thousand bottles of that uh under there. And he said, uh is that opium is halfway to heroin? Which I didn't know about that. So I, I asked my dad. This is a long time ago. I was like in second grade. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I didn't get some of the motivations of the stuff in the movie because I just didn't know. I was too young. 
but it's it's really a great movie. I uh, it takes its time. It has Eli Roth. I mean Nick Nolte, Jacqueline Bissett. Uh, I can't remember the one guy's name. I, I the one other guy, Eli Wallach and Louis Goss Jr. And then the Robert Tessie is in it too with hair. Robert Tessie has hair in this one. Um, it's very entertaining. I really liked it. Well, like I said, I think they kind of build, they were trying to, uh, go on the wave of jaw. They kind of build as a horror film, you know, you know, had a little bit of, a teeny tiny bit of that in there, but not really. But there was seen with the more eel, and that was kind of creepy. My sister remembers the more eel. We were talking about that Sunday. And she liked, I think she liked the movie. But mom told her to go to sleep, so I think she did. But here's a chance to watch it again. It's a great movie. But like I said, before PG-13, they were allowed to get away with female nudity like topless to an extent, not the whole movie, or or bottom of the maybe. Or they could get away with bloodshed or, or like cursing. Uh, I don't know if dropping the F-bomb, but I'm, I'll, I'll never forget the Led Zeppelin movie, The Song Remains the Same, was PG-rated, right? There was a scene where this uh, this manager encounters a guy, manager for the band, or encounters a guy who was selling bootleg T-shirts. Now, the F word was exchanged about 40, 50 times between, I mean, there was a heavy British accent, heavy English accents in there. So, I mean, it might be hard to hear. But it was said like 40, 50 times. And I know that would have gotten, R, that would have gotten R rated, but I mean, for whatever reason, it got PG. But they were able to get away with a lot more stuff back then. But I really liked the movie. I give it a, I give it a, a nine. Well, nine out of ten. A nine out of ten is really good. I mean, the memories, the memories from the movie is a ten out of ten. The movie itself is nine out of ten. I think my mom's, and they had they had stuff with sharks in it too, kind of, you know. But I didn't understand the part where like. Um, the bad guy was coming in and throwing stuff in the wall like chumming blood. I didn't know that about the, about the sharks back then, that they track sharks. Um, it's really a good movie, though. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I loved Fun with Dick and Jane, too. Uh, I, I, I was on the lookout for that one as well. I found that on uh, in AIT. No, not AIT. Fort Detrick, Maryland. On Good Times Home Video. The guys didn't want to see it got that Jane Fonda in it. You know, and they said, I know it, Jane. I don't know, know. But, I mean, it's a good movie. I don't want to see it. And that's still fun. I mean, I think one or two other people watched it with me. I mean, that's a fun movie. I really liked that movie. Now, that was more, I remember, like, I think my mom was, my, my mom was still up. My sister was asleep. And Dad and I were watching that. And it was cool seeing Ed McMahon in the movie. And we were both laughing back and forth. There was a little bit of swearing in it, but it wasn't too horrible. I think Ed McMahon said ass or something like that, and I started laughing. But, I mean, it, it was a fun movie, too. I mean, great double feature. Uh, if I give the Fun with Dick and Jane a 10 out of 10, there's a 9.5 out of 10 for the deep. But it's definitely worth watching. I really enjoyed the movie. I'm finally glad I got to see it again. I've been wanting for a long time to see it again. And I'm glad I finally did. Um, like I said, it's kind of ironic. My sister remembers the more eel. I remember the more eel in those scene with the chicken foot. I just couldn't remember how it went. I thought they were trying to impregnate or something, but it was like voodoo. I guess they were just, I thought they were, gonna, they were cutting her open or something like that. But I guess they are just painting her or something like that, I guess, with a chicken blood or something. I don't know, but it was freaky, though. So, hope you like this review of the deep. I give it a 9.5 out of 10. And until next time, everybody, please. Until next time, everybody. Until next time, everybody, please take care of Malik. All right, gone.